Hey guys, new video here. Uh, Whale Blight Pathfinder update. Uh, so I made some big changes on the skill tree and uh, also in terms of gearing uh, and all that kind of stuff. So let me do a map first. You probably won't be able to notice the difference uh, between the last video and this one in terms of mapping because it plays pretty much the same except for it has more damage and I've solved some of the more uh, annoying parts about the Blight build. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, kill all these mobs here. This is a T16 Spody Forest. Uh, if you look on the right side, there's a bunch of um, modifiers on it because I put a Zaba Table mod on it. And I also put some uh, Scarabs on the map. I was farming this map uh, primarily with this build because it's like open. So if you look like when I cast my Whale Blight, uh, you can see the area moving with me. And you can see that the AoE is actually pretty darn good, right? I mean, this is a Prandus, so I gotta wait for this Prandus chest to um, stop spawning. There we go, there's the, the little coins. And so whenever I'm like using my Blight skill, um, it's got really good coverage on all the monsters. And, and I feel like that's one of the great things about this build. Uh, after playing it till I'm level 98 right now, I think I do plan on taking this guy uh, to 100 since I've solved some of the regen issues uh, on this character, on the Pathfinder. And as you can see, he is pretty speedy right there. I didn't have my Blight, um, so just avoiding those Volatiles there. Grab my loot before this. So touch that Volatile, touch that one, and then we keep going. Now this is a uh, Harbinger set right here. Uh, let me just go show you the boss real quick. I'm going to run in here. Um, hit my oh it's double boss actually okay and then so that's two bosses down um, actually like surprisingly like two bosses is actually easier than one boss um, because of the way you gain souls nowadays uh, on the whale skills and so basically if you don't know um, now instead of like gaining the soul on kill which you still do uh, what happens is you get souls based on how much uh, HP you remove off the boss's health. So as long as your soul gain prevention is pretty close to zero, uh, what's going to happen is while you are damaging the boss, you are still gaining souls. So you don't actually have to kill the boss to gain a big mass of souls, although you will. Um, it's based on uh, shaving off a little bit of HP at a time, and you will gain souls. So like two bosses obviously doubles the uh, soul gain. Once again, as long as your soul gain prevention is very close to zero as the damage is going out. So this map should be almost done here. Uh, hit these two strong boxes. That's an exploding one. Or this pack of magic monsters. Uh, pick up my loot. Ooh, maybe maybe I'll get a doctor in this map. Uh, and you see, it's, it's, it's pretty smooth. It, it pretty much plays like this. Um, the AOE is ridiculous. The coverage is good. The fact that the AOE moves with you is just like uh, just fantastic and very smooth. Very fun build uh, to play overall this league, right? I, I'd say like if you're looking for a um, a a purple damage um, damage over time skill, you're probably looking at like Essence Strain. You have Death's Oath. You have um, the, the Blight, you have the Whale Blight, and things like this. Uh, I guess you, you have things like Toxic Rain and other um, Chow's Damage skills, but but this is like a true dot build, right? So that's the map. Uh, there's more than 50 monsters ring that's probably inside of the June encounter. So I'll go back, and then now I'll talk about what I changed uh, on the build. So first, skill tree. If you notice from the pre... So this is an update video, okay? This isn't supposed to be a, uh, a like all-encompassing video. This is just going to show you the updates I've made from this build from the previous version. So you can go watch that video if first if you haven't. And basically, if you notice, I took off all of this right here. Like So basically, from this strength node, I used to go like all the way up here into Scion, uh, go the big boy life wheel, and then I'll like go up here and then get these like uh, jewel sockets. Well, well, I've dropped all of that. So basically, from like this point uh, all the way down here into this point, all this is gone. And what I've done with it is instead of going through Scion right here, I've gone up through shadow right because like this is supposed to be a fast fun build so i just want to pick up all the damage multiplier nodes and see how that felt so by going up here um right here like the increases to, to chow's damage doesn't really matter that much right um but what you're looking for is this new mod called the multiplier right the non-ailment chow's damage over time multiplier and that applies to um your blight skill so right here, what I picked up is I picked up 3, 6, and 14 uh, multiplier. Now, you can think of this as an extra support gem. They are additive with each other, but multiplicative as a whole. So, for example, if you have two sources of, let's just use easy numbers, um, uh, if you have like... Um, 
a hundred uh a hundred percent increased multiplier of non-ailment chows and a, another 100 um it won't actually be like uh like 100 times your base and then times um times two again so it won't be like times four uh it will be instead it will be those two added together and then multiplying uh, your damage, right? So, but still very big as if it were a extra support gem. So very strong there. So I went up here, I took this, and then I went through here, took the, um, cause you have to make up uh, some of the life that you lost up here. There's a lot of life up here. And so I took the blood siphon right there. I mean, life gain on kill is not bad. And of course the big nodes, uh, not bad either. It went up through here cause it's 20% damage node and some stats. And then I went over here. Now, some people ask why didn't I go through entropy, right? Because look, if I go through here, it's essentially like two more points by gain a giant 27 and 10. So 37 uh, over two is, um, is 19, almost well, 18.5, right? Per node, which is huge. Well, the reason I didn't take this node right, right here and go down this way, is because that has a increased skill effect duration. And if you're playing whale skills, you absolutely do not want increased skill effect duration. That's why things like even the um, the ascendancy of the trickster, right? Um, I think it's called, is it called prolonged pain or something like that? Uh, it, it increases the duration and it makes your soul gain prevention go up. So if I hit my soul catcher, you see it's like 0.16. If I took, if I took this node, it would be 0.3 something, I think. So, uh, you know, whenever your soul game prevention time is bigger than your cast speed, that's a big no-no, right? Because you, um, because if it's under your cast speed, what that means is that as soon as you are moving, you know that your um, your regain of souls is already happening. But if your uh, soul game prevention is is higher than your cast time, then that means there's a small window after you have gotten out of the cast animation where you might be moving those first mobs might not give you soul so that's why it's so important to to not get any um uh, increased skill effect duration if you can right obviously there's there's certain um there's certain i guess uh what's it called um exceptions to the rule which i'll show you with the efficacy uh in a second uh, but basically yeah you don't want this so i went over here for the movement speed i got some life over here well, once again making up some more life got the jewel socket and then i got um you know you have some extra resist here because like if you were down here you took like these resists so it was like it was like a big loss of resist so i have to fix that and then the big one is going through here. So this one is, uh, there's a little bit of life regen in here, but the big one is right here. 8% uh, 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 multiplier, you get 1% life node, which isn't bad, and a 20% damage uh, over time node. Very good efficiency for your nodes right there. And, and so I, I really like this wheel. It's got a little bit of everything in there. Now going over here, you could path through here, life and energy shield, these two, and then go straight into here. But the reason I went right these two points instead of these two is because if you swap this 10 or this 8% life for these two nodes, you get a three point jewel socket right there. So I was like, you know what? I think, I think I'm gonna do it. You know, that, that seems pretty good. So I, I decided to take that jewel socket and then this is the big boy, the big boy uh, multiplier node, right? So you get a three, six, nine, and then 19, right? Well, it's, it's 10, but it adds up. So 19 uh, multiplier here. And then, I mean, a little bit of resistances, a little bit of Caspi, which isn't bad. And then a big uh, damage uh, node there at 20%, right? Along with damage nodes all the way up. So this is like pretty big damage right here. This is like all, this is like half a support gem essentially, right? So that's pretty badass right there. And then what? Uh, another thing I did is I used to have Green Dream right here, or sorry, Green Nightmare right here for Frenzy. And um, I sacrificed that because it wasn't, you don't really gain that extra um, uh, damage from it. You were really only using it for Frenzy Charge Generation. And instead, I moved it right here. So, uh, well, I didn't move the Green Nightmare. I moved an Intuitive Leap right here so I could get a life node, a pretty big life node right here. And I guess ES as well. And I also got Overcharge. Now, Overcharge, um, now, now I have um, all the charges uh, up pretty frequently. If you look at the last map and look at my buff bar, you saw I had all three charges. Now, Power Charges does absolutely nothing for the build. Um, it is kind of a wasted charge, but endurance charge is physical damage reduction, which is really nice and uh, a little bit of resist, which doesn't matter since you should always be capped, but maybe on some scenarios where like uh, you have LE weakness and you you have those very small, uh, you know, uh, less than one second windows where maybe your uh, warding flats isn't up, well, it might help you out there. So, and then of course you always have your frenzy charges up at all times and that is the damage multiplier as well. So overcharge I think was a more elegant solution than green dream uh, and then 
Additionally, uh, another thing you do that opens up a possibility is that on the Green Nightmare, you're probably not going to have an implicit corruption, right? Reason being, uh, Green Nightmare at this point is between 6.5 and 7 exalts, and you're probably not going to be corrupting a, um, a 6.5, 7 exalt Green Nightmare uh, jewel uh, in order to get a, you know, either it cannot be silenced, uh, corrupted blood, which is a big one, cannot be inflicted on you, and things like this. Um, <clears throat> uh, it, in this situation, I think actually uh, silence is better, but but, but this jewel, because Intuitive Leap is so cheap, um, it, the implicits on it, because people corrupt them all the time, are available and they are cheap. So I would say uh, try, try to use this one if you can, because that way you can budget for either like Corrupting Blood or uh, uh, what's it called? Or cannot be silenced, cannot be maimed, cannot be hindered. Like any, any one of these 1% mana, um, reduced mana reservation is also another good one if you're using a little bit more mana for whatever reason. So yeah, this is a good budgeting right here. Allows It opens up some options. And then um, other than that, I still have my Blight Jewels here. I took the uh, I still took the wheel up here with my extra points because I, I gained a few levels, right? So um, with levels comes a little bit of freedom on the tree. And other than that, I think that's uh, about it on the tree. Uh, I swapped out some my rare jewels. I only have two of these, but I had some. I put some all resist on it because with the build, I found it kind of hard to cap your resist. And I, um, I actually, I actually did it through having two rare jewels that had all resist on it. You, you can um, once again, depending on your gear, you might not even need this. Um, but I, I thought it was a good, um, <clears throat> it was a good idea to put resist on my jewel, so I didn't have to get it on gear. The most important, important rolls on the jewel is the 4% uh, mul multiplier. So the roll is between 3 and 4%. And really, as long as you have that and you try to get another uh, another roll on there, and then, then you're all good, right? You don't need like too many damage rolls and then maybe throw a resist on there if you are struggling. Okay, <clears throat> so that's um, that's about it. Picking up the Ascendancy has stayed the same. Now, let's talk about this jewel right here. Efficacy, this is a um, uh, a true more multiplier to your uh, blight damage and your whale blight damage. So one thing I'll talk about that I was trying out is if you are mapping and you feel that you are in a situation where um, for the big bosses you actually don't have enough damage or you're in a situation where maybe um, maybe in a delve or something where you, you don't even need to use your whale blight, you're using your regular cast blight uh, and you need more damage, you could just socket this in instead of ink aoe okay so um i'll show you the damage that adds here um so for the regular blight if i put if i put in that it's uh 27.9 right if i put in ink aoe uh we're looking at 18 so it's like it, it's huge right it, it is absolutely massive um because it's both the the spell damage and the damage over time and spell damage does affect the blight and so um, what you can do is like you can get up your five stacks of whale blight like in a boss if you really need some burst damage because as long as you have five stacks you can always cast those five stacks right it's not the soul game prevention might be a little bit longer and so you won't gain the extra stacks from the boss uh losing hp but that massive damage stack should kill it in time so what you do is um when you go into the boss room you hit your, your soul catcher and you'll have five stacks you can swap in this before right and then have that uh, the efficacy right there and then you you boost Booty blast the boss with your five stacks. Okay, that's a quick swap. And uh, another piece of little, little efficiency is actually, if you're gonna do this, uh, the best thing to do would be to have, I guess, your blue socket, like right here where the screen socket is, <laughs> if you can, um, if you don't have like a corrupted chest, because then it's a, it's a faster swap, you see? Like, like the closer the gem is to a blue socket, the faster the swap, okay? Like, I guess, I guess you can even do this. If you don't want, if you want to micromanage your inventory a little, you could, you could do this, see? You could put it right under, and then it's like a lower mouse travel time. It's like it's like it's like kind of um, I don't know. It, it, it's kind of weird, right? But that, that's a small efficiency thing. Don't don't put your thing up there, right? So oh, this is your blight. My bad. See, so um, you can just you can just do that swap real quick, okay? Just make sure not to like sell your sell your um your gem after you're done napping uh so that's what you can do for a little bit more single target uh overall i think this version is pretty good there's one more change i really want to talk about and that's a cinder swallow urn so it was kind of funny because i was like i was skin transferring um all my flasks uh previously with like cinder swallows but i didn't actually um i, I wasn't actually like using the thing so now what i did is I have, um, so I put my warding on a sulfur flask, okay, and then I put, I have my soul catcher, obviously, my quicksilver, I dropped dying sun, um, so I still have my soul catcher, quicksilver, and my jade flask for my movement speed, and then the sulfur is the warding, right, I'm a pathfinder, so I don't need heat, um, 
and then I have the cinder swallow here for my silver, right? And I did not go with a um, I did not go with a onslaught abyssal jewel because I thought that this gives you the onslaught and um, the big part about this is the uh, what's it called the recovery. So um, you recover the two percent um, two percent of your life if the flask is up and the flask is up for 6.3 seconds because i have 26 percent quality and basically what this means is that if you kill a pack of 50 monsters which is you know <clears throat> might take you a few seconds to do that's a hundred percent of your life regained another thing you gain your es so if you've stolen es you're like 10k 5k you recover all that es as well right it's like 30 something monsters to recover a hundred percent of your es so because this is a pure mapping build and because you're going fast this flask actually solves like all of your regen issues right so that combined with the flesh and spirit where you get 20 percent of your life automatically when you rampage and the um and the two percent life recovery on each enemy killed and the three percent regen the uh the veiled mod that i was able to roll on this one uh, or I, I bought this one purely trade but the same thing right this basically solves all your regen issues and um and it is amazing obviously that won't life that, that the life regen, regen won't work on um cannot regen but the recovery okay recovery always works and that is just insane so i think that it was like and this flask was like i don't know 10 15 c and, and so that actually kind of fixed the build and the build is very fun to play obviously i still get one shot sometimes you know betrayal some some nasty uh, beyond mobs some nasty rare mobs sometimes but um th this flask i think is integral to this new version of the build especially when we have a little bit less life and we go through um the shadow here right like if i went back this way i would actually have a lot more points to spend i would have a lot less damage but i would have about like six point something k life now another thing i changed i, I had the goal on and essentially what I did, I was like, you know what? I wanted to try other um, Zaba map mods, right? I didn't want to always run Domination. Let's try Parandis. Let's try um, Harbinger. Let's try Breach, Abyss, these things. And so if you don't have the um, Domination uh, mod on the map, it makes it a tiny bit worse, right? So uh, the, the goal, a tiny bit worse. So I was like, you know, let's craft a fatty helm. So I, ha I bought this base and I also bought, so where's the other base? This one right here. This one is uh, Temp Chain's Curse Effect, right? Very strong. I didn't craft that one yet. But this helm right here, um, um, it was crafted with an aberrant, um, a hollow, and a pristine. Now, pristine and aberrant are very cheap. You can use two socket resonders to craft something like this without the hollow uh, socket. And uh, basically, I was looking for the negative nine uh, child's resistances and, of course, any kind of life roll. Now, ideally, I would want like 100 plus life. I would want a subterranean roll, which is uh, from the Del Fossil, and that's 2 to 3% increased maximum life. And then I would want a negative nine um, child's resist, and then I would, I would want the 1% of life regen per second. But you know what? This didn't take that long, so um, I'll take what I can get, right? On a lion's pelt, because it gave me evasion for my queen of the forest. And overall, I'm pretty happy with this one. The abyssal socket, you get to put an, uh, an abyssal jewel in there. So I have a, like a 50 life jewel, this goes up to 50, and I have some damage, I have some movement speed on this jewel. So I think that um, even though the life isn't that great, um, I'll, I'll be recrafting this one on stream, maybe like tonight or tomorrow. Um, but uh, th this one I'm, I'm, I'm okay with, uh, but you can get much better. Hollow fossil is very expensive right now. Um, maybe 120 C to... Um, uh, sorry, not 120 C. Uh, probably around like 200 C, right? One exalt for the hollow fossils. And so a little bit more expensive, but I think the abyssal uh, jewel that it adds is tremendous, right? So so that's uh, another gearing change. Did I change anything else? Uh, I still have everything else the same, I think. Yeah, everything else is the same. And so yeah, so that's, that's the new updated build. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I hope you guys try the build because it's really fun. Okay, bye everyone. Bye.